Dear students, in this module, I'm going to continue discussing on the strategies for comparing the protein structures. You know that the entire protein structures can be compared. For instance, if you have two proteins, then the first step is to identify the alpha carbons that are there in the backbone of each protein. Then you fetch the coordinates for these alpha carbons in each protein from the PDB and then you take their distance. But these proteins are 3D in nature and that they have various conformations. So if you are trying to compare two proteins, they are not essentially in the same orientation for an easy comparison. So how do we deal with such a situation? Let's see. So if you have two proteins, a red and blue one, and that they are very similar in their structure as you can see, but if you try to compare these two, it will obviously create a problem because if you move this protein upwards, if you move the red protein upwards, then most probably this is what you will get. And the alpha carbons for each position will be very different. So in order to reduce this problem and to simplify the situation towards a better comparison, what you can do is you can do certain transformations such as translation and rotation. So for instance, if you have this protein and if you, if you rotate it by, let's say, 30 degrees, then the situation becomes very simple. The two proteins overlap very nicely. And now, once you have done that, you can look at the distance between these two proteins by looking at their corresponding alpha carbons that are positioned in their backbone. So the important point to note here is that you may want to have certain transformations done on the proteins of your choice which are involved in the comparison before you actually calculate the RMST. So let's see how do you calculate the RMST. So the root mean square distance between two coordinates as shown here by A and B. So A is from the protein 1 and B is from the protein number 2. In the previous example, let's consider them to be the red and blue protein. So all you have to do is you have to fetch the alpha carbon coordinates corresponding to each other, compute their distance like that and sum them over the entire alpha carbons. And once you have done that, then you need to divide it in order to calculate the average by the number of alpha carbons and take a square root to remove the negative and positives. Now, how do you compute the distance, this portion in the equation? You can simply compute the distance by using this formula, wherein AI and BI are represented by X, X2 and X1 here for X, Y2 and Y1 here for Y, and Z2 and Z1 here for Z. So B has X1, Y1, and Z1 coming in from the PDB, while A has X2, Y2, and Z2 coming from the PDB. So by using this formula, you can compute the distance and you can plug it here. You can sum all such distances for n alpha carbons and divide it by n and then take a square root. So this will help you to estimate the distance between the two proteins that I just mentioned previously. And in this case, the red and blue proteins will mean that this alpha carbon will be compared with this one. This alpha carbon here will be compared with this one and so on and so forth. So one alpha carbon at a time compared with the corresponding alpha carbon in the other protein and the distance computed. Such distances are all summed up like that and then they are averaged over their number of alpha carbons in the backbone. So in this way you can compute the RMST 
And of course, if the RMST is small, then the proteins are similar. However, there can be a case if you want to compare portions of a protein instead of comparing the whole protein. In the previous example, I was talking about comparing whole proteins. But in this example, I'm going to show you what happens if you want to compare portions of these protein structures. So just one extra step is needed here. That is, you have to select a region first. So in this case, the blue protein and the red protein have an alpha helix that is common. While this alpha helix, the other alpha helix, as shown here, is replaced by a loop. So all we are interested in is to compare this with that. So towards this, what you need to do is identify this region, followed up by the same steps that I mentioned earlier of translation and rotation. And then you have the motif very nicely lined up here the alpha helix and of course this can be followed by computing the RMST. So these are the two important things that you need to know that for the whole protein you have to do the entire RMST while for the partial structure comparisons all you need to do is calculate RMST for the selected region only. So in conclusion the motifs, domains and the entire proteins can be compared by simple rigid body superpositioning and their RMST can be calculated towards ascertaining their uh, proximity in terms of similarity.